I spent six months building an AI automated business and this is what I learned. Welcome back, Jordan here. If you didn't watch the first video, I quit my job 10 months ago to grow my own business and I plan to document all the businesses I grow, side horses I develop on this channel and today we're gonna talk about my AI business that I built. I was scrolling through YouTube one day and I came across Mr. Alec Sheffy. And what I loved about his videos is that he had done this business, he'd launched this business before, but he'd started the channel with a challenge of him trying to grow a completely new version of this business from zero all the way to 100K. And he shows you all the different steps of how to get there. And to be honest, I was inspired. You could see results from his business live in the video in the course of a couple of weeks. Alex's challenge that he started was growing an Etsy print on demand store. What is print on demand? This is where the seller lists an item. It might be a t-shirt, a pillow, a mug, something that's usually customizable. So my guy, Alec would put all of these listings up on the website or on Etsy, someone would buy it and then they would say, I want this on the t-shirts. Can you fulfill it? Can you sort it out for me? Can you do a good job? But obviously there's quite a lot of manual work in there. You still have to upload the designs and you still might have to deal with shipping issues and customer messages, for example. So it's not always hands off. And obviously I didn't want this for myself. So instead I was inspired to do a slightly different version of this business using the same processes and software, but a slightly different fulfillment method. And that is digital downloads. So what is digital downloads? Essentially the clues in the name, someone buys a product off of me. They automatically, this is key. They automatically get sent the file with the digital download in. And you might be thinking, what on earth are people going to buy from you that I can just have a file of well artwork data planners and even ebooks when you think about it you're purchasing something and then you're getting content as a result of that and think how big the ebook amazon all of this sphere is the market is huge what i loved about this model is that all the work is done at the beginning as soon as my listing is live someone can just buy the product boom it's fulfilled automatically and that is really key saving me time and allowing me just to concentrate on uploading listings that are likely to be bought. So I knew as soon as I got a winning product, that would be it, finished, rich, just like that. People would keep buying the product and I'd be a happy guy sat back in my chair. And in particular with my strategy that I launched my business in, I was selling digital artwork, digital download prints, prints, I can't say that. I'm from Nottingham where we don't say that print swiftly moving on. Prior to starting my store, I'd heard from a multitude of Etsy sellers that on Etsy, volume is crucial. As soon as you start to get eyes on your listings, it's like an exponential curve. So it's really key to have loads of listings. Side note to this, I am going to create a second video where I go through the tools step by step by step by step because I took inspiration from Alex series, but I also found some tools that were a little bit better, worked out a bit more smoothly for me, created a really efficient process. So if you want to understand those tools, the end-to-end -to -end process from the very prompt that creates the image in the AI tool that I'm talking about, then be sure to tune in. At the time of starting this business, this was a side hustle for me. I only wanted to spend between half an hour, maybe an hour at times creating these listings and uploading them and then letting Etsy do the rest, creating that money for me. And although I'll go through the end-to-end -end process in another video, the AI tool I did use to create the imagery was in fact mid-journey. My designs, ladies and gentlemen, and the design journey. I first started the store trying a variety of different designs to see what would perform, and then I could go from there and pivot and be quick, be agile, from flowers and plants and then mountains and then I moved on to some more colourful artwork. However, I found this really difficult to derive images that actually looked good. And this is a core example of that. Using prompts such as continuous line drawing of ocean sunset view, black and white, bird in sky, dolphins in ocean, 
simple drawing, okay? And this is what it came up with. Like, what is that bird, dolphin, metamorphosis character? <laughs> I don't know. That's why I had to adjust my prompts a bit. And if you understand mid-journey, you are limited to a certain amount of images, depending on how much you paid. And I, launching this business, I couldn't be wasting those images, creating stuff like that when it's completely unsellable. Therefore, I decided to adapt my approach to creating the prompts and I decided to type in locations of real places and real life scenes like a savanna or safari, for example, and create prompts that way so that the AI had something less abstract to go off with and I would have a more consistent result. Right, guys, now the time you've all been waiting for the results. How do you think we did? How do you think we did? Having created 256 designs and having uploaded 113 of these, how much money do you think our store made in six months? And I'm going to give you a clue. It's from $0 to $34,567. What do you think? I'm sure many of you guessed this and I'm sad to say you are correct. It was a big fat 30 foot joking zero dollars. Just let the, the pin drop. <laughs> zero dollars. Six months of work. 250 of designs created. I chose to publish over 100 of these, zero dollars. And let's have a bit of a look at the analytics just so you can understand a little bit more. This is how many views I got in the whole period of listing artwork and half of them were probably of me just looking at my page, checking my listings, checking it on my phone, checking it on another computer, checking it on a different browser just to ensure, checking it on one Etsy app and then another Etsy app because there's two just to make it overcomplicated. And the problem I realised was oversaturation. There's hundreds of thousands of these pieces of artwork and I was expecting people to magically land on mine and it for, magic, for it to magically gain some traction. Big mistake, didn't happen, big, big error. I then did a bit of research. I found some other Etsy sellers, took on their biggest tips to optimize a listing. So I changed all the keywords and all the listings to make sure that they were as viewable and drove as many impressions and engagement as possible. Didn't work. I know I could have used maybe TikTok or Etsy ads to further scale, but by this point, I was six months in, 100 listings on the shop, barely any views, let alone favourites, let alone purchases. It was dreadful. So at this point, I moved on. What do we all need to know? Some key takeaways. Let's get into it. What I've realised in hindsight, I should have used a keyword tool from the get-go. I should have researched the market to find niches that were not oversaturated. Essentially what I did was think, oh, what digital artwork do people like? What looks beautiful on people's walls? Oh, a flower, lovely. No, mate, this is 10,000 flowers probably just of digital artwork. They're not gonna see yours and think yours stands out from everyone else's. Get a grip. The lesson one is research the niche, find that winning area, even if it's something I'm not passionate about. For example, Tarzan, Yu-Gi-Oh, sponges, I, random words. If that's a niche and if that the stats look good, the data looks good, great. Sell that product. Test the niche, not random art designs <laughs> from my brain. And to be honest, that is the main lesson for me. I'd built the systems, I know all the tools, but no one was seeing my listings. So guys, a proposition for you, something you might be interested in and that I'm definitely open for. Because I really do like this business model. I like in the future that when I've got revenue coming into the business, 
I can scale it and give that job to someone else and they can grow the business for me and I'll pay them the wage. I'm taking on the risk. They're getting the consistent wage. I'm helping someone else earn a living and I'm also growing the business myself using these automated systems, win-win. So I have a proposal. I feel with a bit of mentorship and support, surrounding myself with the right people, I could set up this business again with minimal effort. And if that is something you would like to see, maybe it's a series on doing this again as a side hustle, but the proper way, show some support, let me know, because I am more than open to a challenge. For those of you that stayed all the way to the end of the video, million dollar question, where on earth are you sat? What's what I'm doing? Well guys, this is a room in my garden and this is the new kitchen. So I'm sure you'll be pulled along the journey of that whole transformation in my house at some point. But here we are, sat with a kitchen in the garden, making it work. Quantity over quality, had to get this YouTube video out. One day, it'll be an amazing studio, just you wait. But right now, we're sat here, starting YouTube, <laughs> sat in the middle of a kitchen. What more could you want? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next Monday at 4 p.m.